This is Neil Pitwari. This is a segment on link budgeting for ESE 471. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I built to do the link budgeting and calculate the probability of error and bandwidth and other parameters. This is meant as an aid to calculation. Of course, when you're solving problems, you're going to want to calculate these on your own using the formulas so that you know how they're used and what the relationships are between variables. But this spreadsheet can allow you to check lots of different designs for your wireless communication system very quickly, and thus it can be useful. You can save this as your own Google Sheet and plug in whatever numbers you want. I chose to look at a long range, low data rate communication system operating at 900 megahertz um, and I want to design a very long range communication system that maybe is sending sensor data like, like occupancy or um, temperature or whether the lights are on or not. So I'm thinking low data rate and I know from the data sheet of this particular device, this TI CC1200 transceiver that is used in remote power meter reading. It has a transmit power of up to 14 dBm. Yeah, that's decibels re with respect to one milliwatt, but it was easier for me to make this spreadsheet in terms of watts. So I just converted dBm to dBw. There's a 30 dB difference and it's subtracting that 30 dB. So 14 dBm corresponds to minus 16 dBw. And I picked a center frequency right in the center of this ISM band in the US. I picked a reference distance and it's going to calculate the free space power at the reference distance using that, that linear value of one meter. Now I should say that I wanted to be able to enter either dB or linear, not both, because sometimes it's more convenient for me to read the data off of the spec sheet that's in dB and plug it into the spreadsheet. So here I'm calculating the linear value and the linear value says if there's a linear value given just take that, if not convert the value in the dB column using the 10 to the value divided by 10 expression. So that's the math behind what I'm doing here. I'm pulling the linear values and then doing whatever calculations I need, like the free space power at the reference distance using the freeze formula typed into the spreadsheet. After that reference distance of one meter, I'm using a path loss exponent of 2.85. That was my choice, my assumption on what it would be. I also assumed particular transmit antenna gains. I was thinking of the uplinks, the link from the sensor in your home to the base station far away. The base station might have an antenna that would have a lot of gain because it could be bigger or more expensive. The transmit antenna probably is a you know very cheap device. So I picked a lower gain for that. I wanted a long range communication system of 10 kilometers um, to see if that was possible. Um, I picked a noise figure at the receiver of 7, uh, 7 dB. I didn't want it to be a very expensive base station. Um, I, you know, some things we can't change. Everything we can't change on this spreadsheet is given in gray. I don't want to change Boltzmann's constant, so it's in gray, but I can change the noise figure if I want to assume something different about my system. Um, I picked a square root raised cosine uh, pulse shaping. In fact, that's the only option I have for this spreadsheet, but you could put in others and put in the formulas yourself. And I picked FSK, binary FSK, so M equals two. And it allows me then to calculate the bit rate. The coding gain is something we haven't talked about yet. It is a gain that appears in our link budget because we're using forward error correction. If I use a very, very basic coding scheme, I could get one dB gain out of that. Um, if I want to use a more complicated uh, system, it might introduce more latency. And I assumed that if I was sending very little amount of data that I wouldn't want to deal with the latency. We'll talk more about coding in future lectures. In fact, the next lectures, 
And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate the EB over N0 ratio that is possible at my receiver. And then it's going to plug that into the different probability bit error formulas. I plug them in just like um, you have in our table in the notes. I did that for every modulation. Of course, I'm only going to pick one, but I can then see what the probability bit error would be for these different uh, these different modulations. Of course, um, just because it's on my spreadsheet doesn't mean it's possible. I've already entered an M of two, so really the only possible modulations that I could pick with this and have this correct probability bit error would be the ones that are listed with M equals two. Don't try to use QPSK when you've said M equals two. If you wanted to use QPSK, you would put in M equals four and have it recalculate the probability of error for QPSK. Anyways, um, then I also have a sheet where I can go the opposite way. I can put in the C over N not requirement, put in the probability bit error requirement, and then it will calculate the uh, EB over N not required for many different modulations. I can pick one modulation and have it tell me the bit rate, symbol rate, and the overall data rate possible. So I'll just mention some of the tricks that I use to make this spreadsheet. The primary one is that when you're calculating the EB over N naught from the expressions that we had, you need a Q function. And in this expression is a Q inverse, actually, um, which does not come standard in Google Sheets, as you might imagine. Um, I don't think it comes standard in Excel either. So I had to go to Tools and Script Editor and then write some uh, app script code. I'm not actually sure of the language that they use, but you can write your own function. And um, here I use some you know, standard code for calculating ERF, calculating ERF complement, and calculating ERF inverse. Um, and then I wrote in my own Q inverse function that uses the ERF inverse function. That's uh, one trick that we use to come up with these numbers. Um, the other one is that I'm uh, using a VLOOKUP function here. So when you type in 8PAM, it will look up in column A for that 8PAM, and then it will return over here, M, the VLOOKUP function will return the second column it is the number associated for M with that modulation. So here, if I type in 16 square quam, I have to match the case, I believe, of the of what is listed here. But uh, it pulls out 16, and it calculates the EB over N not, uh, or it pulls that from this uh, row um, for 16 square quam here, the 27.55. And then it then uses those EB over N naught in these formulas down below. And I invite you to try it out uh, when you're doing your homework to check your answers. Um, or when you're designing a communication system to determine what the, what the system parameters would be across a variety of different modulation types.